Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at class 5 armour and what has changed in patch 13. Generally speaking, the higher tier armors have seen some significant buffs recently, with armored rigs having all of their stat penalties halved, that is their movement speeds, their turn rates and their ergonomic debuffs, and regular armor vests also, but only for movements and ergonomics. This means that some of the unviable armors previously, due to making your PMC very slow, are way more usable now and closes the gap significantly between these and some of the old, widely regarded good armors. Class 5 is the first series of armour where many of the options are not actually purchasable in any way and have to be found in raid, typically on AI bosses of some kind. Given these are so limited, there's not much point lingering on them for too long. The SNS Precision and Cry Precision CPC are found on the Goons, Big Pipe and Knight specifically, and are some of the best armour in the game, which does make sense given the difficulty in getting them. The same goes for the Killer Armour, who's extremely hard to find now, and funnily enough the Gen 4 Assault, that we still don't have any barters, crafts or purchases for, so it's only find in raid in stashes and things like that. Okay, so one of the first changes hits us right at the top. The Redute T5 used to be the most protective armour in Class 5, but now it is joint first. The Gen 4 Full had its in-game durability buffed to 110, which when taking into account the material, now puts it exactly on par with the T5 at 200 effective durability. It is still very expensive with the barter for 3 lions at Ragman 4, but after the stat buffs the move speed of minus 12% and ergo of minus 11% is actually not that bad now. The main problem is the turn rate, this is still 19% because armoured vests didn't get changed for this specific stat, only armoured rigs for some reason, which leaves the gen 4 full as one of the worst turn rates in the entire game. The Reduke T5 has 6% worse movement speed for the same protection overall, but is a good deal cheaper with the filter paracord barter coming to around 230,000 rubles roughly. The price decrease alone makes it more appealing than the Gen 4 in my opinion if you want to soak up a ton of damage from rounds with less than about 45 penetration. The next armour on our list in position 4 is the Redute M, which also saw a buff to its durability. With an in-game value of 80 now, this takes it up to 160 effective, really not that far off the top two positions. This is another armour that has benefited decently from the stat buffs too, with only a 6% move speed debuff now and a 5% ergo hit, although the turn rate of 12% is a little annoying, but it is manageable. The Redute M has both a cash purchase at 240k with Ragman 3, as well as a barter which often comes to about the same amount. This is pricey, but as it gives both stomach and thorax with no arm protection, with the durability boost and the stat buffs, this kind of becomes one of the best armours in class 5, you just have to pay for the privilege. The next technically accessible armour is the AACPC, classically one of the best armours in the game for PvP due to high performance, low debuffs, thorax only for fighting against high pen meta players and a cheap barter. Unfortunately, I guess this was being used too much, so the barter has been replaced. This is now a bottle of moonshine and a cordura, which jumps the price up to around 250k. This is approximately double what it used to be. It's still locked behind Longline the quest from Ragman, so you still have to get to level 45 and kill 30 PMCs inside the mall to even get access to it. This is not one for the everyday player, but with almost non-existent debuffs now and low weight, it's certainly still a very good armour. The Gen 4 mobility hasn't changed at 7 GP coins with a barter at Ragman 3, which comes to about 210,000 rubles, but this armour specifically suffers a lot from the lack of turn rate buff on the normal armoured vests. At 17%, it's another one of the worst in the game now, which really puts me off personally, so I'd rather just spend a little bit of extra money and get a Redute end these days, especially given it has around 35% more durability. So, onto a brand new armour, the Hex Attack Plate Carrier. As a standalone piece, you can think of this one like the next in the series, from the Karun to the Gajel, and then up to the Hex Attack. It has good stats and decent durability, although is Thorax only, which can cause some issues in CQB. However, unfortunately, the barter is super odd. One roller and four Thor armors. Brand new, this makes it about 280k, so more expensive than some of the others higher up the list. Maybe if you use the Thors, then it can make sense, but that means you're having to use class 4s a lot in order to use them for the barter. Even at three Thor armors, I think this one would be quite expensive and doesn't really work economically, which is a shame given that it's only just been added to the game. The tac tech is virtually the same as in previous patches. It already had low debuffs, so the changes didn't matter too much to it, and the barter is unchanged at 5 gas masks and 6 neoprene masks, coming to around 200k. I think this is probably a fair price, partly due to its anti-theft mechanisms of being 4x4 so quite hard to put in a bag, and a rig with no 2x2 slots which makes it difficult to take unless someone is really quite dedicated. A solid choice if you can get the inputs at a decent level. Next we have the Osprey Protection, which is the Class 5 version. With nearly identical effective durability to the Tactic, this one has benefited from the stat improvements, as now it's only minus 8% move speed, minus 5% ergo, and minus 5% turn rate too, as it's a rig, so it got the buff here as well. 
You do have to suffer through Peacekeeping Mission and get to Peacekeeper level 4, but it is one of the few armors that you can buy in cash for around 155k rubles. I have given this armor a really hard time in the past because of its weird layout with arms and thorax but no stomach protection, however I think I was a bit unfair on the pricing element specifically. Using Peacekeeper's actual dollar rate, this is more expensive, but if you are selling back the info items from the flea market, that is where I get the 155k rubles from, and you might do even better than that if you're vigilant, i.e. buy info items like Slim Diaries, SAS Drives and SSDs from the flea, and sell them back to Peacekeeper to generate dollars at a better rate than he sells to you directly. With the prices of basically everything going up over time every time we get a new patch, this one is actually starting to look interesting. The arms thing will always put me off though, as if you get shot there it takes away durability from your thorax too by implication, as the hit points of the armour is shared across all hitboxes. The Defender 2 is still in an awkward spot, with a strange barter that uses two current armors to get it. These repair so well that really you'd have to have repaired them a lot to get proper value out of this barter, but I suppose it gives you a place to put trashed Karuns rather than finally selling them back to Ragman. However, this is the reason that you never really see these armors out in the wild, as it rarely makes sense to do it. So onto our final three class 5s, which are generally the ones that you see the most. Interestingly, the Gazelle cash purchase was completely removed from the traders, which just leaves us with the 3 coffee and 2 gold chains barter at Ragman 3. Pricing wise this varies, but is typically around 135k-ish, which is still pretty cheap. The biggest downside of the Gazelle though is the ceramic armour type, which means you don't get many uses out of it. One of the compelling reasons for still going with it rather than the Karund in the past was the difference in move speed, but again, because of the buffs, the difference in move speed is halved, going from 10 vs 18 to 5 vs 9, which is much less impactful. It is still technically better armour on protection too, but when we get to this low end, a few hits from high tier bullets zeroes out both, so the point becomes less important. For example, it only takes 2 hits from M855A1, M80 or 762BP to get these to 50% or lower, after which they are acting similarly to class 4s anyway and will get you killed versus higher tier bullets. This puts them very close together in performance, and let's not forget that if you do get a Karund back, you can repair it to nearly full due to the steel material type, which you should be doing with a repair kit by the way, so it's not nearly as costly as using the traders. Once you manage to get to Prapor 4 and can buy the Karund for 113,000 rubles directly from him, I think the value there is unquestionable to be honest. Finally, that leaves us with the Bagari rig in the middle of the two. This has very similar stats to the Karund, although it is a very heavy armour at 13 kilos. This is less of an issue now that the weight thresholds have been increased for our PMCs, but meaningfully weighty nonetheless. It's a little bit more expensive too, with 3 awls, 4 Kajuras and 4 Fleece coming to around 170k, but the internal storage on this thing is absolutely huge. With 25 slots and 2 2x2s, you'd need to splash out on a better rig to pair with the Karunt and the Gajel to get something similar, so for looting, this one is actually quite good value. These days at Ragman 3, I think it's a toss up between the bottom 3 class 5s and probably depends more on the prices on the flea at the time for the inputs than any specific determination of one being better than the others. So overall, what do I think are the best value armors in class 5? If you want to go full Chad, the Redoute T5 is still pretty cheap for what you get at 230k, and as it makes you nowhere near as slow as it used to, it is way more usable than in the past. Given the AACPC's cost increase and quest lock, the Tactech is still a strong contender with a little less durability, but decent all around otherwise, but you do have to get the input items carefully so as not to overpay. Perhaps it is time to start using the Osprey a bit if you can get those cheap dollars, as this is easier to do and less prone to flea market fluctuations for a similar performance. For the final three, if you do have Prapple 4, the value of the Karund is really hard to beat, and it has great repair value if you get it back a few times. But if you value loot space, the Bagari is really good for that now and doesn't slow you to a crawl anymore. If the parts are on the flea cheap, or you're crafting these things anyway, it could be a decent pickup to make more money through looting. So next go and check out my video on the class 4 armors if you haven't seen that one already, otherwise as usual a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.